Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and today we are going to discuss how to control sex desire. No, not control, how to deal with it. <laughs> because you cannot control sex desire beyond a certain limit. If you try to control, it will come out in perverse ways. So, essentially, people talk of controlling sexual desire or sexuality by an, with an intrinsic assumption that there is some magic trick by which you can control this sex desire. But actually, there is no magic trick like that. It's not possible. You know, um, so what, what is that which we can do in our life by which we can deal with this? Because this, this, uh, the sex desire is considered like uh, an elephant. Have you seen an elephant? When the elephant is, is behaving normal, you know, when the elephant is calm, you know, peaceful, moving around his trunk, you can tame the elephant. You can you can control the elephant. You see the mount which sits on the top and controls the elephant like that. That's for a very nice, a very calm, and a very peaceful elephant. So that mount is considered to be the intelligence, and this elephant is like sex desire. So when the when the elephant is calm only then the mouth can control this elephant which means only when sex desire has not when when it, it's not attacking us or in a way that that we are getting overwhelmed by it only till then it is possible to control sex desire with our intelligence but now this elephant has gone mad for, for some reason. Have you seen a mad elephant? Yes. Sex desire is like that. Mad elephant. Madan the Hathi. <laughs> Unmad. Unmad. It's like the elephant has gone crazy. Have you seen? In towns or in villages, you will see elephants. When they go crazy, what happens? They will come and then, my God, there is... They're worse, they can behave worse than dinosaurs sometimes. Crazy, mad elephants. But, so similarly, sex desire is like that. Have you seen the havoc that it can create when it ruins a man's intelligence, man or a woman? So imagine that person... And I will not take names here, no generalization, no judgments. You will see religious leaders, spiritual leaders, you will see presidents of countries. Should I take names? Forget it. Politicians, cinema stars, writers, government authorities, judges, lawyers, businessmen. <laughs> so there is no, there is no power in this entire universe which can control sex desire once it has overwhelmed you. Impossible. It is just simply not possible. So therefore, this, this is not a problem of, uh, this is a problem of, pre, uh, the issue is with prevention basically. So if you have any desire to control your sex desire, the first thing you got to understand, the not the first, this is the first and the last and the only thing that you got to understand is you can only control it when it is not overwhelming you, which means the moment it is, it is trying to overwhelm you, that is the time you have to stop it there. Otherwise, Imagine a man who is sitting on the top of that mad elephant. What will happen? Then the mad elephant will throw him down and that is the situation. 
so raise your hands uh, write it in the comments uh, if if you feel that when that sex desire comes you try to remember shlokas you try to remember sutras you try to remember mudras and mantras yantras tantras what not but you fail miserably every day every minute every second that happens write it in the comments if you if you have failed hundreds thousands and millions and billions and <laughs> unlimited uh, number of times if you have failed yes why because we are trying to do something which is impossible why because it's not possible to control a mad elephant it is simply not possible you cannot control a mad elephant of course by artificial means you know you can take a gun and shoot the elephant but imagine as a man or as a woman you are trying to fight with a mad elephant do you think you have any scope of winning against a mad elephant just forget it the moment you go near you are dead you are finished the elephant will trample and you will be oozing all your everything will be out <laughs> so the first thing we need to do when when we desire at all to control this is we have to understand we have to as this in you know, a nip it nip it in the bud or there's a statement like that which means as soon as it comes chuck it but the question is how to do that well see you cannot artificially you know control sex desire for a very long time which means when we say that try to control sex desire so what does it mean basically it means that uh, the person he when he hears i have to control sex desire it means like he feels oh maybe i should not think of that you no know, object that sex object or which is forcing me to uh, enjoy you know i should not think of that object too much or whenever it try comes you know i should try to not think of it and just not think of it but then not thinking of it uh, will not help you to still not think of it <laughs> no. because imagine now i tell you my guru used to say suppose i tell you uh, don't think of a white colored monkey don't think okay never think of a white monkey suppose i tell you like this so the moment i said white monkey what what is that which is going on in your mind even now i know white monkey you are imagining a white monkey is dancing like this from here to there that is how the mind is the mind krishna says in the gita na the arjuna says actually that i can control the winds but i cannot control the mind and imagine who is arjuna you know if you, if you know the story from the mahabharat you will know when krishna when the pandavas were in exile then krishna had instructed arjuna that please go to the heavenly planets the higher planetary systems the lokas and go and get divine weapons the vyastra because either they are used or not for the kurukshetra war <coughs> you must have them that is what krishna said and then indra had blessed lord shiva had blessed and all the dikpalas arjuna had acquired all the divine weapons of all the four dikpalas yamaraj indra varuna and kubera all the four divine weapons which these four the big palas have now the lokpal sorry not big pal so these lokpals had blessed and initially lord shiva blessed him with the pashupatastra and then he went imagine in this body he went to the heavens and what happens after going there he sees urvashi urvashi is uh, the most uh, prominent uh, damsel in the heavenly planet she is the most a uh, beautiful or the most attractive apsara in the heavenly realms so she 
she sees him and he sees her and he is admiring her why because urvashi is actually one of his ancestors that's a long story why and how so when he is seeing her he is not seeing her you know sexually or as a very attractive lady he is seeing her with a motherly attitude because she is one of his ancestors somehow but now somehow when urvashi sees him she loses her mind completely she is com- completely gone i mean of course because arjuna was a personality of that stature you know he was extremely he was the epitome of all masculine qualities which any woman would fall for very easily so then she goes and expresses her desire to enjoy with him and then arjuna and then just imagine and the mahabharat says that when urvashi came to offer herself to arjuna she dressed in a way which nobody can even ever 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 imagine you know, just imagine if a if a if a member of the opposite sex dresses very attractively and comes to you what will happen you know and imagine if a apsara from the heavens they come one of them and imagine the most beautiful apsara no we cannot imagine because we have not seen apsaras we don't know how they look it's not possible it it, it is not possible to fathom that with our intelligence even if we try it will be uh, some fake fake image we we cannot we cannot understand how how they look they are heavenly bodies and then this lady comes and offers herself to arjuna and then arjuna denies her proposal because she says no. he says no this is not proper i am married and you are my ancestor you are like my mother and then of course urvashi gets very angry and out of that you know krishna says in the kam kama esha krodha esha rajo guna samudbhava Mahasano Mahapapman Didhye Namiha Vairinam Krishna says to Arjuna, this lust is the greatest enemy of mankind. And she fell victim to lust, to this lust. And then she could not control herself. And in the Gita also it is said, when lust is unfulfilled, it turns into you know, wrath, anger and then delusion. And she became so angry, she could not tolerate the fact that arjuna declined her proposal and she ended up cursing arjuna so you will see this time and again have you seen in the movies you know, what people do when they go and tell somebody you know i love you and then that person says no i don't love you back have you seen in the movies what they do imagine this is the power of lust okay so that same arjuna is now telling in the bhagavad gita i can control the winds but i cannot control my mind that arjuna is telling who who was not who did not fall prey to urvashi can you just believe it no we can't because <laughs> that's simply not possible because we have never encountered such a scenario Yes, so when Arjuna is telling how difficult it is to control the mind, we have to understand how difficult it is. Just, just try it. <laughs> so therefore, we have to check this desire in the beginning itself. Right? And many times people do lot of things they do mantras they do uh, pujas they do homas they go to astrologers they go to spiritual communities everything is fine that's great but apart from that what i have seen in my limited experiences we have to have some decent level of stability in our material life which means in the varnashram system varnashram means varna and ashram the body and the soul so that means we should have decent level of engagement in this in life engagement 
loosely can translate as career or even if you are having so much money that uh, your forefathers have left and you you don't have to work for money then you should have serious engagement or even if you are a housewife you are not literally going to the office and you are working it doesn't mean that you should after your husband goes or after your children go to the school you should go on watching tv no that that is not proper either you are the son or daughter of a billionaire millionaire who never has to work or whatever it is we should have good engagements in life materially i am saying not spiritually material of course you can uh, combine it with spirituality that that's different so for example if if you like to sing if singing makes you happy then you must sing maybe you can make a career out of it that's that's different but so maybe you know uh, reading makes you happy then you should read books maybe listening makes you happy then you must listen maybe dance makes you happy then you should dance maybe sports makes you happy you should play sports just by not thinking of sex or sexuality or the sex object you 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 cannot stay for very long because the mind needs some replacement you must give some replacement to the mind otherwise forget it because the mind see mind is like a businessman and how do you deal with a businessman you have to negotiate right so now you go to the mind and you say hey mr mind thinking of this you know person this sex object is not going to make you happy and the mind is like no i'll still think of that sex object because it gives me tremendous pleasure you know the pleasure of orgasm is great great <laughs> so no i will still think then you have to tell the mind no no please don't then the mind after some time will say okay i will i won't think but then what do i think of do i just think of nothing no that's not possible you have to think of something every time you are always thinking so you must be properly engaged in your in your materialistic according to your materialistic propensities whatever it is you like to do heavy work you like to go to the gym go make it a part of your life very important and apart from that according to ashram we should be well situated which means either we are in the brahmachari ashram or we are in the grihastha ashram or later we are in vanaprastha or sanyas we should not be living like animals or like dogs <laughs> doesn't feel good right i know but that's how mundane people materialistic society people are living they are just living like dogs sometimes even married people sometimes so ashram wise we should be well situated and above that if, even if you do these two things you can't get you you cannot deal with sex desire it's not possible because sex the only counter to sex desire is not only a good engagement but ultimately lord krishna answers param drishtva nivartate param drishtva nivartate means higher taste higher tasting what <laughs> param drishtva nivartate which means when we delight in script uh, spiritual wisdom when we are and we are advancing spiritually because ultimately what is sex desire sex desire is completely opposite of spirituality in fact the the biggest not the biggest the only or not only i would say one of the on, only or the biggest <laughs> the biggest symptom of spiritual advancement is your sex desire has gone down considerably 
So many times people think, oh, I'm doing this spiritual practice. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Ye kar raha hu, wo kar raha hu. Ye bhi hai, wo bhi hai. So kya, sir, kya, madam, kya ho raha hai? What is happening, my dear sir, madam? Just this question answers everything. Is my sex desire reducing after these practices? Yes or no? If yes, you are on the right track. If no, get out of that practice. It is not going to help you. Now, I'm not saying that you'll become, you, you, you should become a perfected soul. I'm not saying that. But compared to before, it should have reduced drastically, at least within a span of, span of six months to one year. That has to happen. Otherwise, you are an illusion. I don't care what practice you are doing, what mantras you are chanting. You are either you are doing the wrong thing or you are not doing it properly. All right. So materially, we should be well situated in our duties and in our ashram. And spiritually, we should try to connect with the divine. Because sex is an attraction for matter, basically. Yes. <coughs> And there are two types of sex. One is the gross sex, another is the subtle sex. What is gross and subtle? Gross sex means the gross act of sexuality. And what is subtle sex? You know, subtle sex is, is the pleasure you get when you meet somebody of some member of the opposite sex. That's subtle sex. You know, oh, man is talking, you know, he's speaking nicely, the girl is you know laughing, giggling, smiling, and then the Girl is also enjoying, you know, the man is also enjoying. They're not enjoying physically, but they're enjoying at a mental level. And that subtle transforms into gross sex very soon. Right? So whenever we talk of sexuality, we are we need to understand we are not talking of gross sex only. Okay, we are not talking that you know a man is touching a woman like this, you know, and then they are enjoying. We are not talking of that. All right, and of course, you have to try to abstain from watching sexual material, which is permeating <laughs> everywhere you go in YouTube, in Google, you know, everywhere. It is all around the place. Every Every marketing agent, every film industry person is just trying to awaken and make that elephant more and more mad because then, then they will get more. Then they will get get more money. Then they will be able to exploit your pocket very easily. Why? Because suppose you know, somebody makes a film, you know, very nice film it is, but it is very rare that any film without any sexual content goes goes viral it it will it will rarely happen even if that film has gone viral there will be some element of sexuality in it it has to be there except a few films of course that that is what kaliyuga is so when we say we have to control or deal with sex desire essentially we are trying to move out of kaliyuga and that is why it's very difficult. It's very challenging. And sometimes even if you want to be pure, the other members sometimes don't let you be pure. Hmm? Even if you are want to be good, you want to control yourself, but then there are other people around you who won't let you be the way you want. The others will come and agitate your mind. They, they will not do it directly, of course. But they will do it very subtly. They will give you hints subtly they want to enjoy with you. Yes, it's rampant all over. And have you seen what happens when this elephant goes mad? This elephant goes crazy, my God. It ruins everything. It ruins the person's body. When, when a man loses semen especially, you know, not loses, I would say, wastes semen, no. 64 drops of blood is there in one one tiny drop of semen. So imagine a man, in fact, you know, the other day I was uh, uh, talking to one astrologer. He was telling me uh, in Canada, you know, there's one uh, guy who told him, you know, 
he needs to have sex minimum three times in a day. Minimum three times. My God. <laughs> How is he even alive? <laughs> Three times means his entire the because semen is the last form, you know, that seventh as Ayurveda talks, seven you know, seven elements of the body, and that is the last element which is dhatu, which is even that's like the quintessence of blood. So and in, in semen, there resides all the uh, virtuous, noble qualities. So if, if, if somebody is losing semen or wasting semen, then you will see, you know, they're like, the first symptom of somebody who cannot control the wastage of semen is they, have, they cannot understand or fathom scriptural truths. That is what is happening to people in Kali Yuga. You go and tell them, oh, will you read uh, this, you know, uh, how about uh, reading reading this Bhagavad Gita? How about doing that? No, no, sir, we don't have time. We are busy. We are going to France. We are going to, uh, you know, uh, this Kullu Manali. We are going to Germany, uh, some place, nice place. We don't have time. In German, as they say, you know, it's a kind sight. <laughs> no time. They, they feel that they have no time for God. This is the first symptom of somebody who is not able to retain semen. Because when semen is wasted, thrown out, then we glide down to animal life. And you will never seen, see an animal who is going and asking, you know, have you seen a cat or a dog asking to... You know, another she cat or a you know, she dog hey darling you know actually today is ekadashi you know what do you think we should fast <laughs> no spiritual elevation or spiritual inquiry athado brahma jigyasa is a characteristic of human life so essentially when uh, human beings are going down in their spiritual inquiry, it means they are becoming more and more animalistic. Now, there is nothing wrong in uh, enjoying the quota which the scriptures have set. So, you are doing spiritual practices and you are married, you have a family. Then you want to uh, visit France, go and see the Eiffel Tower, take a selfie. It's great. There is nothing wrong. You will be happy. Do that. <laughs> But if somebody says, you know, I have to go to the Eiffel Tower or I have to go to Statue of Liberty or even I have to go to see the Taj Mahal in India. And that is why I don't have time for God. This is serious predicament. Very serious. The situation is very bad. <laughs> that means that person is not able to retain his semen. Right, and whatever I said is irrespective of gender. This applies equally for both men and women. All right, so no judgments, no generalizations. This is like for we, we need to understand the principle of the elephant. If the elephant goes mad, we are finished. All right, so don't let this elephant go mad. In the beginning only when this desire comes, try to focus your mind on something else. And what is that? Yes. What is that? Very good. In fact, it is said in the scriptures that one who meditates on the eyebrows of Lord Krishna, for him or her, it's very easy to get free from sex desire. Very easy. So, if you meditate on Lord Krishna's beautiful form and his eyebrows, because the Brahma Samhita says, Kandara Pakotika Maniya Vishesha Shobham Govindamadi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami Angani Yasya Sakalendri Abritti Manti. So that 
श्यामं त्रिभंग ललित नियत प्रकाशम श्यामं त्रिभंग ललित द थ्री फोल्ड बेंडिंग फॉर्म ऑफ कृष्णा हैव यू सीन कृष्णास फोटो इज इज नॉट स्ट्रेट लॉर्ड राम इज ऑलवेज स्ट्रेट विष्णु इज स्ट्रेट कृष्णा इज ऑलवेज बेंट लाइक दिस श्यामं त्रिभंग ललित त्रिभंग ललित मींस थ्री फोल्ड बेंडिंग फॉर्म नियत प्रकाशम which means uh, nava yovanam cha which means krishna's form is ever youthful he is ever beautiful he is the most beautiful object that you can think of yes so therefore when you read the scriptures you will know more and more like if you see the vishnu sahasra naam in that it is mentioned hmm? भूपादो यद नील चंद्र सूर्यो जनेत्रे कर्णवाशा शिरोदी दहनो यस्ते यमग्धि अंतस्थम यस्य विश्वम सुर नर खत गोभोगी गंधर्व दैत्ये वेरी ब्यूटिफुल श्लोक एंड इन दैट लॉर्ड विष्णु डिस्क्रिप्शन इज देयर श्रीवत्सा कौस्तुभोद भाषी तांगम which means the beautiful cost of money is there and then shrivat says embarked on his chest curly locks of hair so if you try to focus your mind as this in a savai mana krishna pada arvindayo if you try to focus your mind on krishna vishnu or ram then it is <laughs> it is possible that you can stop this elephant from going crazy all right and in fact i had asked my guru about this <laughs> and he told me that whenever you know like uh, he has passed around you know so many decades of spirituality he told me even 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 now this elephant goes mad sometimes he somehow controls it <laughs> He does not let this elephant go mad. I said, "Where, when this elephant is about to go mad, what do you do that time?" He said, "I just chant the name of Ra very loudly. Why? Because Ra was the one who had killed Ravan. Ravan is the personification of lust. There is no better example in any history of mankind than Ravan, who had." the most amazing chaste beautiful wonderful lady like mandodri as his wife and still running like dogs behind the wives of other men that is what is that is who is ravan so he is the perfect example there is no better example than him so if ram had killed ravan then whenever we are haunted by this desire if we chant the name of lord ram very loudly <laughs> don't think where you are even if you are at the office and this desire comes don't take it lightly don't take it cheaply go outside and just try to focus your mind on the name of ram because abhinnatva nama namino it is said krishna's name and form is is not different name form qualities past times is the same so lord the the word ram the name of ram is even more powerful than lord ram himself because in ramayana the example is there when uh, lord ram was taking a stone and throwing it to the water to make uh, in the ocean sorry to make that bridge that stone was sinking down you know but then what hanuman ji used to do used to take the stone and he used to you know write ram and he used to throw and this stone would be would float in the waters this would not sink and that is how lord ram showed that my name is even more powerful than me so anybody who wants my refuge must chant my holy name okay so just chant the name of ram all the all these desires will go away but 
after that during that time you also have to engage yourself properly all right so that is it from my side i hope this helps and wish you all the best thank you very much